this video I'm going to go over how to monitor your personal Wi-Fi networks for machines that are connecting so you can tell when a, uh, an, a rogue machine has successfully connected to your network. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. So a machine uh, drives by your neighborhood or is just a neighbor, Wi-Fi cracks, your password gets on your network and you wouldn't know. Uh, with this script you can uh, schedule it in a cron job or a Windows scheduler and have it check every hour for any new devices that were added. Obviously you're gonna get notifications on your legit um, connections with uh, family members and guests that come over that use your Wi-Fi but occasionally when you if you see uh, hopefully never see it but if you see a machine connect that you did not authorize you'll be alerted and you can take action. These are the technologies I'm using uh, in this uh, presentation. I use Python to create the code uh, that checks uh, Kismet uh, and sends notifications to pushover.net, which is why I've listed pushover.net there. I have a Kismet wireless sensor running 24 7 on a very old laptop, but it works. Uh, and I use uh, Linux Cron for my permanent solution, and I'm just showing uh, Windows Scheduler. Uh, for those folks who are not going to use Linux and want to have this functionality anyway. Here's a kind of overview of how the script works. So the script uh, imports information from the My Personal Auth Info Python, which has a username, password, and server information. Then it retrieves information from the Kismet server itself, uh, the authentication information first, and then it uses that to retrieve all the devices. Then it does a delta check against the existing data set. So you'll have a JSON file uh, with your SSIDs per, S, uh, sorry, your MAC addresses per SSID. And it just does a, check, a delta check. If there's something new, it sends you a notification and then it saves uh, all that information, including any, any deltas back to the SSID kind of mini database so that next time it runs, it doesn't, you don't get another alert. So let's jump into the rest of the presentation. So here I've loaded up the Kismet SSID re Retriever Python script that I've made available on GitHub at this address below. And I'll go over uh, the, the highlights of all the, the uh, different commands that I used and why I used them and, uh, and what they do so you can uh, modify to your liking. First of all, I took advantage of existing libraries. So request for HTTP, JSON to process the JSON that I'm going to retrieve from the Kismet server and for outputting to a file. Date time for time handling, certify for SSL certs. And then uh, this one I created myself. It's just a Python script right here that I included separately with username, password, and server information. Here I specified my Kismet ID, password, and server and my pushover.net account information. So I had to go up the, to the pushover.net site, uh, had to, I had to buy the application for my iPhone, uh, but that entitles me to the notifications. Uh, I think it's like 7,000 a month, uh, which is a great deal. Uh, pushover, by the way, I'm not affiliated with pushover.net at all, but uh, pushover.net uh, gives you a token. Um, you put your, your, your user token uh, information here and your de the device that you want the message to go to so the the pushover device equals here is my iPhone device as it's configured in the pushover.net uh, console so now I do not have to blur all that information out here as I go through the rest of the video so let's start with the first variable pushover alert uh, equals zero uh, this is to make sure that you don't get uh, alerts on your first run uh, it's just a precaution and you'll, you'll see what I mean as we go through the code. So I set a value for last hour because uh, I'm going to use this for the retrieval of devices from Kismet and I'm only going to ask for the last hour and I'm not, no point in making a huge request every hour uh, for everything. Then uh, I have set up the pushover um, URL. This pushover information is coming from this file. Uh, I set up the the content type, this is required for pushover. And and then I specify the Kismet URL because I'm gonna use this endpoint information uh, on Kismet to retrieve the cookie. So let's go through that process. We'll set a payload, a header, blank as well. And then uh, 
auth response. I'm going to populate whatever Kismet Wireless gives me into auth response. So here I make the request, passing that information, and I reach, I receive a uh, auth response, the information with body, headers, and so on. But I'm interested in the headers, so I, I do auth response dot headers. Uh, I specifically ask for the set cookie um, value, but it actually has two values in it. Uh, separated by a semicolon so I took advantage of that and did a split and I was only interested in the uh, first value so there I grabbed the first value so the kismet cookie now contains the cookie information I need for the request later on uh, this def uh, defined alert new uh, will be called if a new device is detected uh, and then uh, a call will be made to pushover.net with a payload saying, hey, I found uh, this MAC address uh, with this manufacturer information. It last connected uh, at this at this time. You can see right here the string that I'm building in the message to be able to pass that over to uh, pushover.net. Okay, so we have all this ready to go to be called later. But first, let's check if we already have existing data. So if this is the second time the, that the, this script has run, you will have this file, presumably. Uh, if you don't, then this will fail. This whole section will fail. And then this one will take over. In which case, I create a uh, SSID to client map um, in memory with the SSIDs that I'm interested in. These are my, my SSIDs for my networks. Uh, at least for this demo. And then because uh, an exception would indicate that this file doesn't exist, I set pushover alert equal to zero so that I don't alert on all the uh, all the clients that are going to be detected in the next lookup. Now if this had succeeded here, then it would just populate the SSID to client map with all of the information that was already uh, known. In which case, uh, we'll be able to do a delta on the new devices. Okay, so let's formulate our get device URL for the Kismet server where we're going to ask for the, all the devices. And here I'm appending that last hour uh, that I defined up top so that we only get the last hour's worth of information. Okay, get devices payload is nothing. Um, get devices header is going to have to contain this and this so that we can actually uh, pass our authentication and get the uh, the, 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 the entire uh, collection of devices. Here's where we actually call uh, the request. We use the request library. Uh, we, we run the request function and pass all those values that we created here and the results are returned from the Kismet server inside device response. Now, the, the response comes back as new line delimited uh, file, so there's one um, line per object. So I needed to change that uh, with this little uh, piece of code where I just say, take this, give me the text portion of it, and then replace new lines with, com with uh, commas, and then load it uh, using the JSON library into here. So now I have all those entries in logs. Now we process those logs. We go through each one of them and we check, uh, is this particular log entry a wireless access point? Yes. Is this device uh, common name inside my list that I already already loaded? Basically, is it part of, uh, is it either monitored, monitored guest, or, uh, or vector sigma and so on? Those are my SSIDs. It is? Okay. Does uh, the associated client map exist inside of that object? Basically, does that wireless access point actually have clients? It does, then continue forward. And, and basically here, I'm gonna start looping through all the associated clients. So if the wireless access point has say 10 clients, then I'm gonna loop 10 times here, right? I'm gonna go client number zero, uh, process that. And then if the client is not in my existing data set, remember I loaded these up from a file, um, presumably if it's the second time, um, if not, it would just contain the SSIDs. So if that MAC address is already inside, say, monitored, 
then um, if it's not, then add it. If it is, then don't do anything. But uh, let's say it, it detected something new because it says, hey, is, is uh, the MAC address beginning with 98 inside of here? No, it's not. Then then open this guy up. Uh, let's say it's monitored guest. So it'll put the, it'll actually uh, reference the monitored guest object and then append that new client to that array. Um, so then it'll just have another MAC address. And then if it got this far, um, it'll check if pushover alert is equal to one meaning you do want to send alerts. If, if so, then call the alert new, which was above, I covered earlier, and pass it the MAC address. And so it passes that information, which of course um, will pass that over to pushover.net and we get a notification on our phone. Here's an example on the right-hand side um, of what the notification looks like on an iPhone. And once that's all done looping and everything's done processing, then I open up a file for writing with the same name as before and I'm going to append all the new information because remember if we went through this process we've added new entries we don't want to alert on that ever again right so we open up the file and then we take that and we dump it into um, that new SSID client map and of course we do the right thing and gracefully close down the file um, and that's it uh, you now your your database now has the latest collection of your MAC addresses, assuming that it was legit. If it wasn't, then you you'll have the message on your phone letting you know there's a new device that you didn't authorize, and then you can uh, go take some action, like blocking them. Um, if anybody comments to this video uh, about having automatic blocks, then uh, maybe I'll do a block uh, automatic blocking on uh, using one of the other security tools. All right, so let's check out where we uh, uploaded, where you would you would upload your uh, Python script. I put mine here. Let's take a look at those files. Uh, these will be created uh, when the script actually runs. So will this. Uh, so what we want to do is upload that my personal auth info, which has the username, password, and server IP, and then the Kismet SSID retriever uh, Python script and uh, I'm setting it up with my local uh, user permissions. Uh, so I'm logged in as this. So that's what uh, I gave permissions uh, to read, write, execute for that guy and for root to have access to it. And uh, there you go. So uh, now that we have that running, uh, let's just CD enter and that'll put us back into our, our, our home directory. I'm gonna go in and run cron tab minus E and scroll all the way to the bottom and add that line. Uh, so I'm calling uh, every hour basically on every day, um, every month, um, every day of the week, uh, run Python 3, run the Python script, and then any output send to temp kismet log. That's if you wanna um, uh, have a little record. And that way you, when you put print statements in your Python, um, it'll all go there and you can take a look at it later. So that's it. Uh, you just save this and then every hour this will run and check for any new devices. If you want to um, test it when you first install it, to, you can have it run every minute. You can do a uh, divided by one there like that on the first asterisk and that'll run it every minute. Um, or you can do run every 15 minutes and that's it. Uh, just save the file. I'm going to leave it at an hour. I'm going to save the file by hitting control X. Y for yes, enter, done. So this uh, Python script now runs uh, once an hour. But the SSID JSON file actually gets created here locally. So if I do an LS for SSID, you actually see it's in this home directory, okay? Because it's the cron tab is running from here as that user and uh, the Python script doesn't have a path directly to the specific directory, so it assumes it's this one. So this is where your uh, the data, your little database of uh, associated clients will be. And that's it. So uh, let's move to the next step. Next I'll show how to do the same scheduling action uh, similar to CronTab, but in Windows. Um, obviously, 
if you're going to use uh, something like this 24 hours a day, uh, you're going to need a machine that's always on. Uh, but I'm going to demonstrate it on a Windows 10 machine. Uh, but the task is effectively the same. Go to Task Scheduler. Cre I, I created a folder in here just to or start organizing my scripts. Like that. And let's create a new task. Let's call this one uh, Kismet Checker. And I'm, I'm going to leave it as run only when user is logged on, which obviously is not a good idea. Uh, you'll miss out on a lot of information. But if, uh, if you're running a server, just make it to run when you're logged on or off uh, so that it's always running. Uh, the trigger for this will be daily. Let's start at midnight. Like that. And we're going to repeat the task every hour for the whole day. And leave it enabled. And we want it to run forever. And I mean, we want the, the scheduled task to be enabled forever. Not that it's going to run constantly. All right. And the action is where we are going to point to where our Python script is. Here's a, uh, oops. We're going to put our Python script is in here. So we're going to paste it in here. So we're going to find on our hard drive where our Python um, is. On my on my hard drive, it's there. Find you have, to, you have to find where yours is. Put your Python executable there. And then the Python script that you're uh, gonna wanna execute is the Kismet SSID retriever. You wanna put that here. And then you want the Python script to work inside of the Kismet directory there. Um, of, of course, this will be different for you, but wherever you stored that, that Python script, that's uh, the directory you wanna put it in. Uh, you wanna put it in here. Okay, hit okay. And OK again, and that's it. You're, this is now going to run every hour, uh, starting at midnight. And uh, you'll get the pushover notification, and that's it. Uh, I really hope you uh, find some benefit in this. And if you liked the video and you did benefit from it, uh, hit, me, hit me with a like. And uh, if you want to see more videos uh, and hear when I post new videos, hit that subscribe button. Uh, see you guys later.